What's up everybody? Did you know it's been about a year since the infantry combat overhaul? And at its release, there was a lot of concern and criticism over the changes and where the game would go from there. So I thought it'd be fitting to talk a little bit about the game's overall health. But first, hit the subscribe button, leave a like, drop a comment down below. What servers do you normally play in? And let's get to it. If you're new to Squad, the infantry combat overhaul largely focused on overhauling the infantry gameplay of Squad. It changed a lot about gunplay specifically. And in a general way, it was a pretty big shift in how the game operated. There were several public playtests which brought a ton of feedback and criticism before the update was released. And it still generates criticism and feedback to this day. And I do remember some commentary around Squad at the time suggesting that the update would probably be the end of Squad or it would kill Squad altogether. So I thought it'd be kind of interesting to take a look back and see where Squad has progressed since that update. So I was trying to figure out ways of judging the game's overall health, and this comment was left on a recent video, which I actually utilized to help structure this video. So within this comment, they're referencing the fact that the game has been in a steady decline. Not as many people are playing the game, or at least are playing more modded, which I can't really differentiate statistically. And then there's no competitive scene, no milsim scene, and the clans or communities are a joke. Now, the main reason I'm referencing aspects of this comment is because it's largely uninformed. So I thought we could take a look at some of these areas and sort of address some of the things brought up in this comment. But one thing we're going to look at first is the continued development of Squad. If a game is getting supported or not, it's typically a good indicator as to where the game is in its life cycle. And just in the last several months to a year, we've gotten several updates, including 8.1 that included the WPMC faction, the new scoreboard or after action report that's very educational for new players. It wasn't that long ago that factions were then broken into units and map voting was actually implemented. Late last year, we saw the Turkish land forces added, and since then, we've seen a few new vehicles added to different existing factions. And if you're looking for a different perspective, more so on the continued development of the game towards the future, we already know that there's more stuff coming to the game. For example, OWI has teased a complete overhaul for the map Al Basra. If you look at the new video OWI put out along with 8.1, you'll notice that there seems to be a tease of a new cast helicopter coming along with helicopters on Fallujah? Question mark. Now with recent updates, and I'm sure updates moving forward, OWI continues to make tweaks and changes to gunplay generally. And if you've taken a look at any of the videos that I've done featuring the OWI Q&As, you can get an idea of what OWI wants to focus on in terms of tweaks or new content updates, as well as gameplay updates. Regardless of whether you like the content, you can't argue with the fact that content is still being released. But the next big question is who is playing or how many people are playing some of the new content that is featured in Squad? Well, to give a frame of reference, the Squad Infantry Combat Overhaul released at the end of September in 2023. So we can look at the average monthly players list on Steam DB to get an idea of what existed prior to the Infantry Combat Overhaul. So beginning with October 2022, you had about 7,000 players on average playing Squad. There are some months where you had over 10,000 average players playing, and you peaked somewhere around 22,000 players. But if we look at September 2023 to now, you can see that the average monthly player base has grown. It has climbed since September 2023. And in fact, since January 24, there has not been an average monthly player base below 10,000. And twice this year alone, Squad has broken their record for most players playing more recently with 38,000 as a peak in September. The thing that goes against plenty of the comments that I typically receive and other content creators likely receive is that since the infantry combat overall, less players are actually playing squad, which is inaccurate based on this data. Now, if you look at this graph, the infantry combat overhaul would be roughly towards the middle, just before October 23. And as you can tell, there's no significant drop off in the player base. There are certainly highs and lows. You are obviously going to have a peak during free weekend or a sale, but then there's going to be a drop off afterwards. And even if we look at a stagnant area, for example, the period before October 24 leading up to 8.1 being released, you'll notice that the average player base was still over 11,000, which is an increase of about 3,000 average players since October 22, and an average of about 1,500 players since October 23. I think it's safe to suggest that the average player base per month has grown since the infantry combat overhaul release. And that's not the only area that's seen growth. When I mentioned the comment earlier about the squad competitive environment being dead, that is also inaccurate. In fact, it is thriving. In fact, there's a whole discord dedicated to tracking competitive teams and the tournaments they may actually take part in. And in fact, there's been over 10 tournaments just this year. There's ranking systems and leaderboards and a website dedicated to squad esports. The squad esports website actually lets you track active tournaments and stats by the players actively involved in those tournaments. 
and you can often find these matches broadcast on either Twitch or YouTube. Now, admittedly, I'm not as familiar with the Milsim side of squad, but I do know that there are communities that are focused on a more hardcore tactical experience within the game. For example, Squad Ops, which actually hosts some of their own One Life events and actually broadcast them on Twitch. And in fact, there are many different communities with different focuses that are all tied to squad. Now we're going to use the term communities loosely because some may identify more as clans, teams, or just communities, but ultimately many of them operate different servers across different regions of the world. And if you're looking for a community to join, I would certainly recommend playing in their server, joining their discord and trying to be involved in whatever events they have. Hopefully you can find folks that are like-minded to what you're interested in, that play other games you're interested in, as well as squad. That way you have a group to play with. And if you are new to the game, this is a great way to actually learn how to play. But typically finding those communities to begin with is sort of up to you. Now, speaking of communities, we can't leave out the modders, the community that helps continue to make content outside of just OWI themselves. I've referenced groups like the Tactical Collective that make several different mods for squad. For example, you have Supermod, a relatively new mod that the Tactical Collective worked on that alters a lot about the gameplay in squad. And it combines several different mods into this one mod, including things like their French faction or their VDV faction. There's also the popular Global Escalation mod, which also does several things to alter the gameplay in Squad. And there's plenty more out there, including mods that are just new factions that hopefully will get incorporated in the game down the road. I think having an active modding community for a game that allows that is pretty ideal. It says that there is general interest in sort of continued development outside of OWI themselves to make things for the game. And that means there is general interest in something different or new. It's not necessarily a negative to have people that want to play a modded version of the game. That's just a preference. They still want to play squad. They may just want to play modded squad. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there are certainly things that OWI needs to address within squad. Something that is largely talked about the community is optimization. As much as we love new content, it's still important to be able to play it and play it in all of its glory. And that is certainly something on OWI's radar. Recently, they have said that this is going to be something that they're going to be working on moving forward after update 8.1 released in September. And of course, we always want a balance of bug fixes attached to many of the updates that they're going to release. So where does that leave us? Well, if we're doing a health check of squad, I think the health is pretty good. Squad is neither dying, trending downward, or doing anything of that nature. Instead, it seems very much alive and active, and the communities that largely support it are active as well. And of course, if you're somebody that has not played squad or is interested in purchasing squad, hopefully this video gives you enough data to make that decision. Because I know a lot of times you're looking at a game like this to purchase, and you're wondering, is it worth it? And I think there's some indicators here suggesting that it is. Especially when you factor in things like, is the dev continuing to support the game? Are there active players? And are there active communities? Now, I know many of you that are veterans of the game and continue to play are probably overhearing about the infantry combat overhaul, and I am as well. But I thought it pertinent to this conversation to reference that as a pivotal date in the overall look at how the game is doing and its current health. But along with that, I know there's going to be many veterans of the game that still want things like the optimization that I mentioned earlier, bug fixes, and plenty more. And I feel the same way, but I'm also excited to see where Squad goes from here. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Obviously, this is a little bit different in the context of a lot of the other content I make. I mean, we typically talk about updates and commentary around factions as well as guides, but this is a little bit of a different look at kind of where Squad is right now. But when I look at stuff like this, I'm reminded that there may be new players watching some of these videos, wondering if they should buy the game or invest more time into the game. And I want to make sure that they understand that the game is alive, because I think the more people playing the game, the better. And by doing this video, I'm reminded that there is certainly an active community behind the game. And I'm a part of that community and I enjoy playing squad. So why not share some of this? So be sure to hit the subscribe button, leave a like, drop a comment down below. What servers are you playing on right now? And I'll catch you next time.